A big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. I got three briskets cooked to perfection, but how long should I actually let them rest? When you're cooking the perfect brisket, there are two elements that are most important. Number one is sourcing the right brisket, getting one of those fatty, juicy briskets that are going to turn out amazing every time, no matter what you do. And the second one is the one we're gonna talk about today. It's the resting part. How long should you actually rest your brisket for? You could rest it how long you want, like you could slice into it immediately, or you could rest it for an hour, like I recommend most of the times. But what time is actually perfect? Does the brisket get better the longer you rest it? I wanna find out. In a mood provided me with this beautiful USA brisket. This is a prime brisket from Cedar River Farms. It has a great amount of intermuscular fat. That's gonna make this brisket absolutely perfect. Because when that fat renders down slowly, it's gonna make the brisket juicy and tender. And the only thing that's making this brisket better is having three of them. The first thing that I'm gonna do before we start cooking these brisket is inspect them. I wanna make sure that they're absolutely perfect. These are gonna be for my friends and family. So that means I'm not cooking for looks, but I'm cooking for flavor. And I'm gonna leave the fat on as much as possible without having big chunks of fat. And these are already trimmed up real nice. So all I need to do is take off some of these floppy bits that are just gonna dry out. Then the next step is taking some light sea salt and just a bit of ground pepper, mix it up and sprinkle it onto the briskets, making sure these briskets are well covered. Now they're ready to go on the Bernhard Flint. I'm gonna be smoking them on this pellet smoker and I set up a double level in this grill. That's gonna give me so much cooking surface and that's exactly what these briskets need. I'm gonna be using hickory pellets to smoke these briskets. This is gonna give the briskets a strong smoking flavor. Now I'm gonna set it to a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. Did you not put in the plug, Martian? Sorry. Sorry. This is a key feature of a grill with a plug. Always plug it in. Yes, it's in the manual. No, I didn't read. Yes. Now it's working. I'm just gonna slide these in and put them over the tray, the dripping tray. One on the bottom, two on the top. And I'm placing these briskets fat cap down because the heat in this pellet smoker is coming from the bottom, going up and then out the pipe. So this way, the briskets are protected from the heat that's coming from below and the fat's gonna melt beautifully. The briskets have been in for one and a half hours and we can clearly see that we're picking up a beautiful smoke color. That's what I'm looking for. I wanna see that hickory add flavor to my brisket. But at the same time, I gotta keep check on the temperatures. So I'm gonna stick in a thermometer to make sure I got keep track of time and temp. And I'm gonna stick it in the thickest part. And each of these briskets is getting its own thermometer. You get a thermometer. I feel like Oprah. There we go. Let's stick it in. And now I can just close the lid and sit back and relax for the rest of the day until these things are done. These briskets cook exactly the same. Same bark, same cooking temperatures. I'm rotating them around in my barbecue because every barbecue has hot and cold spots. Once these beautiful briskets build up a lot of bark, a good smoke color, and hit a core temperature of 92 degrees Celsius, I'm taking them off the barbecue and I'm wrapping them in butcher's paper. Then I'm gonna place them in an insulated box so they can rest. I got one brisket resting for three hours. I got one still resting for an hour. And this one isn't rested. It's straight out of the barbecue. It still sits at a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. That's extremely hot and way too hot to eat because I'm gonna burn myself. But we're going to slice it open, take a look inside so we can see what not resting does to a brisket. Oh, this brisket definitely looks good. We got a beautiful smoke ring, absolutely perfect. And it's juicy all the way through. I was expecting 
well, more of like dry spots and, and, and juicy spots. So um, kind of more of a differentiation. But when I'm slicing into this, it's just juicy all over and it's blowing my mind. It's really good. It has a lot of intramuscular fat and that makes it very juicy and tender. We're getting to the end of the brisket here, which is a thinner part, and there the brisket is getting less juicy. Just gonna try. It's super, super hot. Therefore, I can't really taste it real well. So I would kind of straight up say, it doesn't make any sense not resting your brisket because it's gotta come down in temperature. It's just, it's even too hot to hold. Curious to find out how this one hour rested brisket turns out. I can already tell you, when I grab the bottom, it still feels kind of hot. That it looks moist doesn't mean it's less crispy. And actually, the outsides feel more crispy. Now I want to know what the core temperature of this brisket is. Just to see how much in an hour it lost in temperature in my insulated box. It's 82 degrees Celsius, which is just 10 degrees dropped in temperature. That's insane. That's not a lot. Now I want to slice into it. Ooh, it looks less moist. That's so weird. I didn't expect this. It looks good, but it doesn't look as moist as the last one. We're getting beautiful slices here. And again, we got a beautiful smoke ring. We got a nice crust on the outside, except the color is less pale on the inside. It's more of a grayish. So somehow that color changed on the inside. Let's take a closer look at one of these slices. This is a comparable slice to the first one, and it looks juicy, it looks tender, it's easily, it breaks up, cooked to perfection, and it's still hot. Let's give it a try. Mm. It does taste more juicy. To me, it looked less juicy, but in reality, it tastes more juicy. Now, is there a significant difference between this brisket and the one that we didn't rest? I would say in taste and mouthfeel, no, but it does appear less juicy. Now we got one final brisket, the three hours rested brisket. Let's see how that turned out. Let's check the temp. Ooh, we're running at a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. So that's a significant lower temperature, but 60 degrees Celsius is actually a great temperature to eat your food at. It has the maximum amount of flavor without giving you an unpleasant feeling in your mouth. Now let's slice into this brisket. Ooh, that looks good. We got a nice smoke ring. It looks plenty juicy. All in all, this looks like a great brisket. And I can see that the outside points here are a bit crunchy. It's definitely a really tender brisket. This is a big success. Boop. Nice and tender. It's warm. It looks great. Like, when I look at it, I see a great bark. I see a beautiful smoke ring. I see a juicy brisket. But now let's just dig into this. Mm. I got beef flavors. I got a nice bit of salty, peppery crust to it. And it's a juicy brisket. In reality, the only thing that makes it better than, for instance, the one hour or the zero hours rest of brisket is that the temperature is a little bit lower and that's more pleasant to eat it. You guys probably thought that I didn't do the taste test. Of course I did. Until now, I haven't uh, seen any difference in taste. The funny thing flavor. is, yeah, but the funny thing is we ate the other briskets while well, we didn't fully eat them. We also saved them for later. But we had some slices and now, after three hours, I was hungry for brisket again. Go. Really, really good, but still, I'll stick with my opinion. The one hour rest of brisket has also the best bark, in my opinion, because it was crispy, but also packed with flavor. It was like if the, all the juices were sitting inside that crust, and now it's like... I totally disagree. I think this one's better hmm? in the crust than, no. this, than the one hour. Now I, I let it rest in like an insulated box which means it's gonna take a long time for it to cool down. Mm -hmm. I would rather just lay it on the board, let it rest on the plank right here, and let it come down to temperature to around 70 degrees Celsius. So you got 10 degrees to slice it into, get it to a plate, still being warm on the plate, 
but blast them to eat. Yeah. That's, what, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Oh. Is it gonna save a bad brisket? It's probably not gonna save a bad brisket. Is it going to help? It's definitely gonna help if you get dry spots in your brisket because the juice is gonna flow back. We saw that on the one hour brisket. Mm -hmm. yeah, the definitely. juices were more like into the crust and corners. And if you got a brisket that's not been resting, the dried out pieces are still gonna be dry. There's no, not gonna be juices in those parts. So let's talk about what you're gonna do with all those sealed briskets now. I was thinking about making a brisket onion soup. And if you wanna see that, no. comment down below. That's just for me. But if you wanna see it, comment down below. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna expose I'm, I'm them to empowering all. empowering the people to give up all your secrets. And on that note, gonna walk that way. Since, since when did you get the power to do that? I want to thank you guys for watching. Of course, if you want to, I'm going to expose you to my soup. Just let me know down below in the comments and I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk! And keep on grilling, but click also the video, man. But they already did, so they're probably not here anymore. So there's no point in having this discussion.